Hello and welcome to Psych 3020 Measurement in Psychology with me, Mark Horswell. And this is your online refresher presentation that you should have a watch of in week one. And uh, this is what it's going to be about. So, first of all, we're going to cover all of the things that you must know as background for doing Psych 3020. Uh, and these are things that you should have been taught in previous courses, but that you may well have forgotten. What I'm going to do is test the content of this presentation during the in-class quizzes, which will take place during your computer lab tutorials. And so to prepare for this, first thing you should do is make sure you can answer all of the questions that you'll see in blue boxes to the right of the slides. And the second thing you should do is go into our special software called Question Horde, which allows you to test yourselves on uh, a whole load of questions that you might get asked in the quiz. So I'll be demonstrating Question Horde during the very first presentation in week one, and you'll find Question Horde in the main menu on the Psych3020 Blackboard website. The content of this presentation includes number one, scales of measurement, two, the normal distribution, z scores and percentile ranks, three, correlations, four, research methods that could be used for program evaluation, and five, APA 7th edition format. So, scales of measurement, there are four scales of measurement nominal, ordinal, interval, ratio or noir. So when we talk about uh, nominal scales, nominal is means as in names. Another description of a nominal scale is a categorical scale, as in categories. So this is where there are discrete categories, discrete uh, ways of classifying the various uh, different things within your data. Let's start with an example from psychology, or in fact any science that has experiments in it. So in a randomized control study, you'll have typically a treatment group and a control group. So that variable, treatment versus control, would be a categorical variable or nominal variable because you can be either in the treatment group or you can be in the control group, but you can't be sort of halfway in between. Let's uh, look at some examples of nominal scales from other disciplines. Uh, so the reason I'm doing this is just to try and make a point to you guys that when we are going into uh, measurement and talking about measurement, these are things that apply not just to psychology, but uh, can be applied to measurement in pretty much any other domain. Okay, so here's an example uh, from astronomy, classifying things as planets, say, versus stars. That would be uh, an example of classifying things on a nominal scale or categorical scale. Or oh, human physiology, uh, liver versus lung, uh, two different things. There's no sense of a sliding scale between the two, uh, and therefore that would be a categorical or nominal scale. Now, what I'm going to do during all of these presentations and also the uh, live presentations is to talk about these blue boxes on the right. So to the right of the slides, you'll find a whole number of questions, and these are supposed to prime you as to the sorts of questions you should be able to answer based on the slide content in the quizzes or the tutorial worksheets. Let's start with this one. True or false? A categorical variable can always be measured using a nominal scale. That's true because categorical and nominal are essentially referring to the same thing. So the answer to that would be true. Next scale of measurement is ordinal. And ordinal as in this is a situation where things can be placed in some sort of rank order. However, in an ordinal scale, the distance between uh, objects when you rank them isn't necessarily meaningful. So let's look at some examples. Political parties. We can probably take political parties and we can usually rank them from left wing to right wing in, in a way that uh, most people would probably agree with. Okay, so here we go. So some Australian political parties for you. So maybe people would describe one nation as very right wing, uh, nationals as slightly less right wing, liberals as slightly less right wing than that. 
uh, Labour as uh, starting to get a bit left wing and the Greens as more left wing than Labour. That would be an example of an ordinal scale because at no point are we claiming, for example, that the, uh, the One Nation are twice as right wing as the Nationals. That, that concept has no meaning on a scale like this. It's just a order that is meaningful, not the distance between each of those things. In uh, sports, where we hand out uh, gold, silver and bronze medals, again, that's another example of an ordinal scale where the order of those medals is meaningful. So gold is always better than silver, which is always better than bronze, but we're saying nothing about the relative distance between them. So it's not the case that say gold is twice as good as silver, which is twice as good as bronze or anything like that. Here's an example uh, from clinical medicine. So in clinical medicine, when you want to uh, measure someone's uh, level of consciousness, uh, people very often use what's known as an AVPU scale. And AVPU is an acronym that stands for uh, ALERT. So that's the first point on the scale. This is where you've got your patient and they're conscious and they're clearly alert and you can talk to them and so forth. The next level on the scale is V for voice. Uh, this is where they might look like they're unconscious, but if you uh, call out their name, uh, they'll respond to your voice. Okay, the third level down is P uh, for pain. Uh, and this is where maybe they're, they're a little bit, they look unconscious, they don't respond to your voice, but if you do something like uh, sort of squeeze their finger or something like that, uh, they will show some level of response to that stimulus. Okay, so that they're responding on some level, but uh, not, they're not just, they weren't responding to your voice and they're obviously not alert. Okay, and the final level is unresponsive, that you can pinch them all, all you like uh, and they just won't respond, which means they are completely unconscious. So, a proof scale, a classic example of an ordinal scale in that you can put those four things in a rank order, but we're making no assumptions uh, as to the relative distance between each of those four levels. Let's look at the questions on this slide. So true or false? In soccer, the team with the highest number of goals is categorized as the winner. The other team is categorized as the loser. This is an example of a nominal scale. Okay, so the answer to that is false. And it's false because when you've got winners and uh, you've got a winner and a loser there in that example, those can be clearly put into an order. So presumably winning is usually better than losing. Therefore, that would be an example of an ordinal scale, not a nominal scale. Okay, next question. In an art competition, there is one winner decided by the judges, a second place decided by the judges, and a separate people's choice winner decided on by the public. The rest of the entries are designated losers. This is an example of an ordinal scale on the face of it, it might look like an ordinal scale, but there's an important exception there, which is that we've got this separate people's choice category, and it's not clear, at least there's no information there, about how that people's choice category ranks relative to the other categories, the sort of uh, the winners and the losers decided by the judges. And because we can't rank order that people's choice, then that means that this can't be, overall can't be an ordinal scale. So if we remove that people's choice, it would be an ordinal scale. But if we include that people's choice, uh, then it can't be an ordinal scale, which means we would have to deal with it as if it were a nominal or categorical scale. So the answer to that is false. Next scale of measurement is interval. So uh, as in interval between things now is becoming meaningful, but for an interval scale, the zero point is arbitrary. Okay, so classic examples of interval scales from other disciplines. Uh, temperature, if you measure it in Celsius or Fahrenheit, is a classic interval scale because the, the distance between the units is meaningful. However, the zero point is arbitrary. So in Celsius, for example, the zero point is the melting point of water. That doesn't mean there's an absence of temperature. It's just been arbitrarily chosen as a convenient sort of marker 
Okay, so a convenient thing that's easy to measure, but it doesn't mean if the temperature is zero degrees Celsius, it doesn't mean that we have a complete absence of temperature. Okay, so that means uh, we can't say, for example, that 80 degrees Celsius is twice as hot as 40 degrees Celsius. That doesn't actually mean anything. Another example, time of day. So another thing where it's an interval measurement because it's meaningful to say oh, between 12 o'clock and 2 o'clock is 2 hours and 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock is 1 hour. So the distance between measurements, between points on the scale is meaningful, but there's no uh, a zero point. There's no point at which we say, ah, oh, there's a complete absence of time here. All right. And likewise with day of the month. Okay, true or false, uh, temperature as measured in degrees Celsius is a ratio measurement. Uh, the answer is false. No, it's a interval measurement as just explained. All right, final scale of measurement is ratio. So as in the ratio between things now becomes meaningful because the zero point is uh, an absolute thing. That means the thing, whatever you're measuring is not there, is absent. Example of this would be uh, distance, you measure a distance with a ruler, uh, zero actually means there's no distance there. What that means by having a proper zero point is that, for example, 20 centimetres is actually twice as long as 10 centimetres. We can make that ratio level judgments. Uh, money, yeah, so basically you can say, yeah, $100 is twice as much as $50 and zero dollars means you don't have any money. So zero point is meaningful. Timing in seconds, so yeah, so uh, 10 seconds is twice as long as five seconds and zero seconds uh, means no time has passed whatsoever. That's a, a meaningful thing to say. Right, true or false. If we can state that the score on a measure is twice that of another score on the same measure, then these scores must have been gauged on an interval scale True or false? That's false, because they must have been engaged on a ratio scale for that thing to be true. A ratio scale where the zero point means an absence of whatever you're measuring. So, we've talked about scales of measurement in lots of different disciplines. Let's talk about scales of measurement specifically in psychology. Generally speaking, uh, scales in psychology are often Strictly speaking, they're ordinal rather than interval. That is, for example, when we're measuring something like intelligence, you can make the argument that the difference between someone with an IQ of 120 and 110, that's 10 points, uh, that difference doesn't mean the same thing as the difference between someone with an IQ of 70 and 80. Okay, Even though they're both 10 points, that doesn't mean that that's the same difference in intelligence. You want to be really strict about it. This means uh, a typical traditional intelligence scale would be an, uh, an ordinal measure, not an interval measure. However, and that's a big however, it's the case that if you actually look at how these scales perform when we do statistics on them and when we do assumption tests on them, they generally approximate the properties of having interval equality pretty well. So that is, even though they're technically ordinal scales, they behave well enough like interval scales that we can essentially treat them as if they're interval scales. Why would we want to treat something that's technically an ordinal scale as an interval scale? This is because if we can treat things as interval scales, we can do more sensitive statistical analyses on them. Okay, specifically parametric tests. We can potentially use parametric tests for interval and ratio scales. When we use parametric tests, we, this rely, requires us to make assumptions about the underlying distribution and those assumptions we need, need to be true for those uh, tests to work. But if we're using either nominal or ordinal scales, uh, we instead need to use non-parametric tests. So don't have these assumptions, but they're also less sensitive. Generally, if we can say the scale is interval or ratio, we can use parametric tests if we meet the appropriate assumptions. 
But if our scales are nominal or ordinal, then we have to use non-parametric tests because non-parametric tests require fewer assumptions. Okay, they don't require us to make assumptions about underlying distributions. True or false? Measuring measurements using the ratio scale always require the use of non-parametric statistics. No, that's false because there'll be lots of ratio scales there that would meet the assumptions of parametric st statistics and therefore there are situations where we can use parametric statistics. Is it the case that we can always use parametric statistics when you've got a ratio scale? Uh, the answer to that is uh, no, because there might be situations where the scale is ratio uh, but your parametric statistic requires, for example, a normal distribution and the scale doesn't have a normal distribution. Okay, second question. Strictly speaking, a typical intelligence test is an ordinal, not an interval measurement. Yeah, so that's, out of that is true. Strictly speaking, intelligence tests, aptitude tests, personality tests, they're all strictly speaking ordinal and they're not interval, but we tend to deal with them as if they're interval for the reasons I discussed earlier. All right, third question, we generally treat psychological scales as if they're ratio, even though they're technically interval scales. That's false. So it, we tend to treat them as if they're interval scales, even though they're technically ordinal scales. Fourth question, we tend to treat psychological scales as being interval scales, so we can do non-parametric tests on them. So that's false. Uh, the way I could change that to a true answer would be to change it to we tend to treat psychological scales as being interval scales so we can do parametric tests on them.